let's talk about internet trolls and social media etiquette, guys, because this video is overdue. Um, I'm gonna be a little bit snarky, and Penny's probably gonna mess up my little stand here because she's right here. Penny, say hi. Say hi. So I have actually a list. I'm gonna talk to you about some internet trolls out there, and I, again, I'm being snarky about this. Um, <laughs> You've probably all experienced somebody doing one of these things to you. Um, if I ever send this video to you in the future, it's because you're doing it to me. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I don't think I would ever do that. Or would I? <laughs> um, but let's start with, you know, my favorite troll, the one that I get like every week, if not five times a week or more. And that is what I have named the douchebag troll. The one that goes, hi. Hey, like what else you got, man? What else you got? Nothing, because you're hitting on me and you're a total stranger and it's rude and weird and creepy. Hi, do you think I'm yelling at you? <laughs> I'm not yelling at you. I'll stop yelling, I promise, I'm just being silly. This is gonna be a great video, I can tell. These douchebag trolls, as I like to call them, are obviously very eloquent. They've got a lot to say. And I just want to say, before Penny cut me off in my little rant, that if, even if I wasn't married, this kind of crap wouldn't work on me because what self-respecting woman responds to, hey. And I guess that could apply to ladies too, although I really don't see a lot of ladies doing this, maybe like once or twice or three times. Okay, I've seen a few. Stop it right now because if you can't think of like a full sentence, um, something to relate and connect to that person on like fully, then you don't have anything to say. So why are you writing to them? Like just don't do it. That's number one. Number two is what I like to call your black hearted trolls. And these are the mean ones, guys. I feel like probably should have started off the list with them because these are, you know, your essential ultimate trolls, the ones who tend to leave comments who are nasty. And I'm talking filth, like they attack you personally, they attack things that they have no way of knowing about you, um, they go for the heart. <laughs> they go for the throat, actually. <laughs> Um, so black hearted trolls. I don't want to spend a lot of time on them because I just think they're a waste of space. And I think that um, something I'm, I was planning to say at the end of this video, but I'm just going to say it now because I'm in a venting mode, is that if you have these kinds of trolls, it's usually very jealous people. It usually means that, I mean, unless there's actual constructive criticism to it, which is like a whole different thing, and that's not a troll, that's a different kind of thing. But I'm talking the nasty trolls, the ones that attack you for no reason, out of nowhere, say things that they shouldn't, say things that are super inappropriate, just because they are on the internet and they don't have to see you cry after they say it. Um, don't do this, guys. If you are this kind of person and you do this to people, stop it right now. It's not okay. I'm just gonna say that these kind of people are jealous and they are very often reacting out of their own pain and they're not thinking about the pain that they're inflicting. Or if they are, they're they're just doing it out of their own hurt. So you have to try not to take them seriously. You have to realize that it's coming out of their place of hurt or their place of jealousy um, and them wanting what you have, what you've worked so hard to do. So the silver lining of a troll like this is that, and actually all of these trolls, is that usually it means that you're doing something right. You are working towards a real goal and actually making progress enough that other people are taking notice. Troll number three is the read my book troll or the do me a favor troll. And um, all of these things, like they don't really, I don't really consider them trolls if there's a relationship. Like if you and I are friends and you want a favor, I'm here for you. I am that kind of person. I'm loyal. I I pretty much spread myself then helping as many people as I possibly can. Like my patrons, my CP, my betas, all my friends in the writing community. I do my best to help everybody. But if you're a total random stranger and you reach out to me and I've never met you before, we've not had a single conversation and you say, hey, can you read my book? I'm gonna say no. Uh, I might not even answer you at this point because it happens to me so frequently. And you know what? Sometimes they're really nice about it, other times they're really not nice about it. But even if you're nice about it, you have to realize that, and I'm gonna talk about this in a minute too, but um, you are not being nice, really. No matter how prettily you phrase it, 
you're asking them to like a total stranger to spend hours of time, hours of their valuable time on something for you when they've never met you before. <laughs> you have to take into consideration, especially that the more you see a person of influence and the more influence a person has, the less likely they are to, to have time, if that makes any sense. So just don't do this. Don't be the read my book troll, like develop relationships with people, um, ask nicely, but never expect people to read your book. And same thing applies to the favor troll, which is kind of like the same thing. Never expect people to do your favors. Always make sure there's a give and take. Cause like in the writing community, there's so much give and take. Like um, I help people and they help me and that's awesome. But if you're just out there asking people to do stuff for you, that's not okay. The next troll, number four, is what I like to call the Google troll or the do it for me troll. And this is the person who writes me questions that they could write in the Google box, guys. You could write it into Google and get the same answer that I would tell you, which means I'm sorry, but you are wasting my time. And that is not a good way to start a relationship with me, at least. I don't know about other people. I assume that most of the people watching this don't want to be treated like Google. Who wants to be treated like Google? Like, hey, I'm just going to type into Bethany and see what she says, what pops out, because that is so rude and so frustrating. And I know, I know that people don't think about it and that some cases they see, you know, and I've done this, so I'm guilty of this too. Like you see somebody as a resource who knows so much and you're like, I'm just going to ask them. I'm guilty of this. I've done this to people and I regret it because it's so rude. Anything that you could type into Google, especially if it's super simple, like um, what is a printing company <laughs> or like definitions for things or where do I find this or whatever. If you want opinions, that's kind of different. Like um, what's a good example of an opinion? Do you like Kindle Unlimited um, or do you prefer to go wide with your books? Like that's more of an opinion type thing. And while it still could take a long time to answer and it's good to have like a relationship with a person before you go and ask deep personal questions, which we'll also talk about. It's still better than treating them like Google. You know what I mean? Number five is the gimme trolls. And so this is slightly different from the do me a favor troll because they just want everything you have for free. You know, hey guys, I got a book. Gimme it. Give me it for free. Um, why aren't you offering your book for free? Why aren't you doing a 99 cent offer or whatever? <laughs> like, why do you want people to support you on Patreon? You should just give me all your advice and all the hours and hours and hours of hard work that you pour into creating the best possible content. You should give me that for free, right? You should give me that for free. I feel like everything that you possibly do should be free. Um, although I go to work, you know, being them, you know, I go to work and I work a day job and I make all that money and I expect to be paid for it. But what you do as an author, you should do that for me for free. You can tell I'm a little snarky about this. Um, I really, really do not like the gimme trolls because I already give away so much free content like here on my YouTube channel. And if you don't want to support me financially, you don't have to, but I am not going to give away everything I do for free because um, books are incredibly hard to write. Books deserve to be bought. And I don't care who disagrees with that because there'll probably be some trolls on here that disagree. Um, but if you write a book, I personally think that you should be paid for the, like if people want to read it, they should pay you, if that makes sense. So I've had a lot of people be like, you know, hey, you wrote a book, you should give me a copy. I'm like, yeah, you can buy one if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how I feel about it. Unless I'm offering you something for free, don't expect it to be for free. And that sort of leads into number six, which I have decided to name your dressed up trolls. And so these are the, the trolls that are actually really nice. Um, I kind of mentioned this already earlier, but it's dressed up in the sense that they're writing to you really kindly, which is awesome. And I really appreciate that. Um, and they are just you know, saying the best things like, hey, I really love what you do. I really appreciate, you know, this content and that content. And I really um, am thankful for what you put out or I like your books. But their, you know, their writing is dressed up as a favor and it's still, still being a troll because again, if there's no relationship, you can't expect somebody 
to drop everything for you like you have there has to be a real relationship there um, especially like I said earlier the more influence a person has the less time that they have so like for example I have almost 100 patrons and so they're coming first and also my CP and my betas and the other people in the writing community that I am close friends with they're gonna come before a total stranger and I don't care if you don't like that if you want to have help from me you might want to have like an actual relationship with me first that's how I feel personally um, I think I can speak for everybody when I say that though like whether you are you know big, medium, or small influencer, whatever you do, whatever level you're at, you're not gonna want a total stranger coming at you and asking for stuff, no matter how nicely they put it, no matter how dressed up it is. <laughs> and I think that leads well into number seven, which is, I can't decide what to call this. I'm calling it either the too familiar troll or the bestie troll. <laughs> and this is the person who, um, I don't know if everyone will get this, but like the person who's been following you for a long time, so they feel like they know you, but you don't know them. And I've been guilty of this one too, actually. Um, you just, you know so much about the person and you really look up to them. And so when you write to them, it's like way too personal. And it's like, you know, advice that they didn't ask for and they didn't solicit. Or what else? Um, the people who like ask where you live. That one freaks me out, guys. Don't ask me where I live. I'm not giving you my address. <laughs> Things like that. Like I, I can't think of any specific examples for this one, but don't do this. This is like, like, just think like, okay, how well do they know me? And like, m let the relationship develop the way that you would in real life. Like if you walked up to somebody in real life, you'd, you'd have a little bit of that etiquette that's just like, you know, hey, how are you? Here's how I know you. And that like introductory stuff before you dive into, you're my favorite person ever and I love you and will you please come to my bar mitzvah slash birthday party slash wedding or something <laughs> I don't know just you get the idea just make sure the relationship develops naturally and that you're not like forcing yourself on somebody number eight is the follow unfollow trolls and these ones ugh, they don't bug me as much as some of the others because I'm just like used to it now and I almost just don't care but when other people get sad and they talk to me, like some of my patrons have said like, I'm so sad that my follower count like grows but then it drops again and I just get so mad on their behalf because I'm like, it's not you, don't take it personally, it's not you, it's those stupid people out there that think that they can go and follow someone and then they wait until um, that person follows them back and then they unfollow and that behavior is so so rude and there are people who actually hire um, internet companies to do this for them I can think of a couple people in the writing community specifically who have done this um, and when I figured out that they did this because they followed me and then they unfollowed me I was very very disappointed in them and I never want to be that kind of person and I just really encourage you to not do that either because again it social media is about relationship like there should be actual relationship there so if you don't want to follow somebody just don't follow them and let your social media grow naturally because yeah numbers aren't everything i could talk about that more but we're gonna keep going number nine is the using you trolls and i don't know i could think of the best name for this this kind of falls under some of the other troll categories so i guess i don't have a lot more to say about it but just don't be this. If you're gonna talk to somebody, talk to them because you actually wanna have that friendship with them and don't just try to talk to them to use them or get them to do something for you. Last but not least, we have the spam trolls, which these come in all shapes and sizes, guys. Like there are all colors of the rainbow in this category. So one example that I saw recently was um, somebody who did a bunch of links to their book on like all my videos, like at least 30 of my videos they went and said you know this is my book and it's about this and this and this and this and you should go read it and here's the link to go buy it and you should go buy it right now and then they did that on 30 videos <laughs> okay all of those comments got deleted um, I don't delete comments if they're constructive criticism or real questions or really anything I don't delete hardly anything except the spam trolls 
I don't appreciate spam trolls. I don't think anybody else appreciates them when they're scrolling through the comments. Nobody wants to read that crap, so I delete it. It never gets seen by the world because YouTube actually puts it into spam before I even decide that it's spam. YouTube decides that it's spam. <laughs> Another one that I had recently is uh, still happening. Pretty much every video I put out, this guy puts in some coding, and I don't know what it is, but he keeps doing it for like the last couple months. And again, YouTube puts it directly into spam, so I don't even see it until I go to my spam folder and I just delete them all. Um, but he thinks he's being cool to do something with coding and I don't know what it is, but it's never gonna see the light of day. <laughs> now spam trolls are sometimes robots, so it might not even be a real person, especially on like Instagram. If you've ever been on Instagram and you've had somebody comment on your stuff and they're like, cool dude, or like an emoji and that's it, um, it could very well be a robot and it could be spam. Um, so like what can you do, I guess those aren't always a big deal depending on what the spam is sometimes it's fine but other times the spam that is just super inappropriate where you just like the conversation is not about your book but you make it about your book if that makes sense or the conversation is not about your product but you make it about your product um yeah just don't do that i mean like Try, this is gonna be my social media etiquette for the day. Try to act on social media the way that you would act in everyday life when talking to somebody in real life, in person. I don't know, real life is not the right word because you're in real life still, but in person. Like if you wouldn't walk up to a stranger on the street and say, hey, do you wanna buy my book? Then don't do it, don't walk up into somebody's comments and do it, you know what I mean? Like. All of these comments, all of these trolls, you can avoid being one of these trolls if you just think, what would I do in real life? <laughs> if that makes sense. Like you guys, I will make you a bracelet if you need one <laughs> Like that says, what would I do if they were in front of me, okay? Just run all your social media interaction through that lens and just think like, is this appropriate? Should I actually be saying this? Um, or should I get to know this person better before I say something super invasive and, you know, ask for a million favors and <laughs> whatever else, you name it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Again, I was being a little snarky, but there is a lot of truth to it. So if you have done any of these things and I've done some of these things, like I mentioned, I'm guilty of a few of them, not all of them, but a few of them as well, just stop. <laughs> That's what I would say is just stop doing it. Don't do that to people anymore and you'll be okay. Again, remember the acronym. What would, hold on. <laughs> what would I do if they were in front of me? <laughs> what would I do if they were in front of me? W-W-I-D-I-T-W-I-F. Yeah, I don't know, I have lost it. <laughs> but you get the idea, just, run your social media interaction through that to avoid being an internet troll. And that is your social media etiquette lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed. Give it a thumbs up if you thought it was funny. Give it a thumbs down if you've been one of those trolls before and you're being one now. <laughs> hope you guys have a great day and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye!